Um, so welcome boot campers. This is the introductory video um, for the design and research and prototyping section of the Uristica boot camp. Um, this is Carl speaking. You'll meet me here in a, a minute and um, Malta Holm is the other the other instructor and you'll be meeting him shortly as well. So what we're going to do today is give you just a brief overview of what we're doing and then we're going to go in and have very much hands-on workshops um, when we see you in the boot camp. But we want to get and give you an introduction so you understand the overview and kind of where you are in, in the process. Um, so to start off, we all have ideas, right? Um, we all have ideas and that's, that's why you got accepted into Uristica, right? Um, but we, once we have this initial idea and kind of where to go, we need to step back from it sometimes and do some research and go understand where the users are and the context and the people. And to do that, um, um, we have to go out in the field. And some people ask, like, so why do we do design research? And why is this different from other research? Um, design research is very much focused on observable behaviors. Um, and these are really key um, because if you go out and just start asking people what they like, people don't really know and they usually don't know how to articulate it. Um, in this case, I don't know if you've actually seen this episode, but when you, they went to ask Homer Simpson what they wanted, he put all the crazy bells and whistles and they ended up with the worst product design for a car. Um, so we're going to bring you through a process that helps you do interviews and really get to the meat of what people want, not really what they say or what they like. Um, and it's, the process is to strip away all the assumptions that we've brought to, to this idea. Um, so a brief overview of the research process um, that, that I do and Malta does. Sometimes it's referred to as a user-centric process or sometimes it's referred to as an IDO process. Um, generally most design consultancies use some variation of this and, and so are we. Um, so up on the upper left hand corner of the screen um, is where we're going to start. And usually we have a topic area, right? We know generally where our product's going to be. Um, but we need to go and find observable behaviors around um, our product, right? So we know where to look. We have to have something to look at because if we just start asking people what they feel about, you know, general things, um, we, our research gets really muddy and, and kind of lost and we don't know what to do with it. So after we've designed the, defined the observable behaviors we, we want to look at, we go out and we do research out in the field, um, away from campus, away from our desks, um, and this involves interviews, lots of question asking, a lot of talking, a lot of, uh, it sounds a lot like you're being a, a psychotherapist and just kind of asking why and why, and sometimes we sound like five-year-olds and we ask why and why a lot. Um, and we also go out and do observational research and see what are the elements in the environment, um, who are the other people that are involved. Many times it's not just the customer and your product. There's many different chains involved and we want to know all the different actors out there. And so this is very much just finding things. We don't have any answers. We're just going out there looking um, and being inquisitive. Um, so in the workshops, we're going to ask you to go out and do these, these, um, this research. We're going to give you some tools to do that. And we're also going to ask you to record um, your interviews. So you can go back and look over them again and pull out all the little pieces of information um, that seem relevant. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. We're, but we're going to pull them all out so we can put them up on a wall. And we take those and we're going to put them, spread them all out when you come back to um, the the second session and dig through them and find the different themes, right? Where's the overlap? Where do we find continuous um, points of, of problems? Where do we find people's expectations not being met? Where are people worried about this product not, not, not fulfilling what they need? Or where did we find places where people are really excited about these sort of actions? Um, and we group these all into themes and we start looking to find what ones are the real insights. Right. A lot of these th um, observations are going to come back and they're going to be fairly obvious, but we're going to dig through and try to find the ones that are really insightful. And these are the ones that will set you apart um, and your product or service um, apart from, from the competition. Um, so these are become these opportunities. 
Um, and these opportunities are all based on the research that you did out in the field, right? They're already been validated. Um, and these we are going to use um, in the customer value canvas. These are the, the values that you're bringing to the, the customer, right? Um, and our final output from this research phase is a up here in the upper right hand corner is a how might we statement and these usually work like how might we facilitate person X so he can do action Y or how can we change person X's mentality about something something that we can generate a bunch of ideas around and these might not be the product these might be how can we um, uh, bring up the level of, of, of people seeing your product or how can we find a better channel for your product how can we make people in the distribution channel happy so it's all a win so it might not directly relate to the product so in this research process um, just to give you a little bit of an overview of what that means when I talk about research um, here's an image of uh, research that I actually did an interview uh, with a student I was working on a project for uh, collaboration and we kept asking her kind of like why did she feel this way why did like paint me a picture of how that acted what kind of tools did you use um, and I kept asking until we got an interesting answer um, so we're going to give you some tools and some ways to write questions that, that dig at these things so you don't get just, oh, I liked it, I didn't like it, I felt good, oh, I don't like it when this happens. Like, you want to keep digging into these things. Um, and beyond doing the one-on-one -on -one interviews, um, we're going to see if we can find places for you to go out in the field and observe how people really behave. Um, people will tell you one thing and behave in a very different way. Um, and then you get to ask them about that and find out what was their motivation behind behaving a certain way. Um, so actions really do speak louder than words, so we're going to try to get you out in the field to find some things. And while you're out there, observe all the actions, the environments, the objects, the users. All of these are possible opportunities to, to make your, your, your design concept stronger. Um, so record out there, you know, what are, what are the tools they're using? What are the, the people who are um, involved that you didn't think of at first? And are they performing a role in your service or product? Um, and then I mentioned that you're going to do all this research and then you're going to record it. Hopefully on video would be great. Audio is okay. Um, and then you're going to read, go back and look at it again and write down um, all the, the observations you had, like this is a little point of interest, and pull out every little thing you might think is interesting. The, the image here is actually from a project I did, and we had hundreds of these little tiny observations, little bite-sized pieces of, of data, right? And then we take those and we start organizing them. And this is kind of a, a long process to find those the, the themes in there. So we take these observations and we look for themes. Where's those overlaps? And then we look for these insights. What were the really surprising things? And then we help build these into design opportunities where there's actual uh, room for growth and change and something new in the market. Um, and these are the these design opportunities are what's setting you apart from the competition or um, just making your product fit well in the society you're about to, to introduce it into. Um, so that's a general overview of the, the research phase. That's going to take um, two sessions, and you have a week um, to do all of the research, and you're going to come back and, and present us, and we're going to help you sift through it. Um, and then you're also going to take these opportunities and look at the customer value canvas, and you'll have a chance to plug those into your customer value canvas. So this is your output from, from these two, two sessions. Um, so once we've we've gone through this research process, right, and we've developed these how might we statements, then we can begin the design process, right? We've gone out and investigated the context of, of where our product or service is going to be, um, and then we can bring it back in, and we have these how might we statements, and these are designed to be very generative, meaning that we can take them into a brainstorm and make a whole lot of ideas, right? You may have your one core idea, but we might be actually working on ideas on how better to distribute your product or how better to communicate your product, right? So we're going to do these brainstorming, create all these little soft ideas, and we're going to then go and make 
um, rough prototypes, right? Really rough prototypes. And we're gonna do this in, in a workshop. We're gonna get to sketching or making really quick mock-ups of things or role-playing perhaps. There's lots of different ways to, to make prototypes, um, rough prototypes. And then from that rough prototype process, you go back to the people you originally um, talked to and experts and start showing these prototypes to other people. Um, and then get feedback and refine your prototypes and start entering this, this loop of refinement until you feel like you've really nailed what you're trying to do and it's communicating what you want clearly. Um, so a few few notes on, on prototypes. Um, the way we build prototypes, they're very fast and cheap, um, and they're tools to use for learning, right? They're either to communicate to someone else or to put something outside of yourself so you can step back and look at it, have other people look at it. Um, and they're, they're very cheap, right? If you're perhaps doing a, a software package or a web design, right? We don't need to go and start coding it and using videos, right? We can use some, some tools that keep it really cheap so we can do a lot of iterations of, of the um, project uh, and learn as fast as we can. And we do this because we don't want to, you know, put all our time and effort into writing code or a program for something and then find out that we wrote it wrong, right? We can find out all that before we get there. Uh, and the background here is just an example of a, a pastoristica prototype, really quick and, and, and dirty to just show what this, it was a bag in this case, what this bag could be and what they'd be using it for. Um, and we're also going to show you a prototyping method called storyboarding, which is really useful. And it's storyboarding like they would do for the movies, right? You have an opening scene, you uh, introduce some characters, the characters do something, and they interact with things, right? Um, and it's a very linear thing, um, drawn very quickly, you know, just Sharpies and 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. Um, and this would be a way to illustrate, like, the experience of using your product or the experience of using this web page or service, right? And you show not only um, this zoomed-in view of what's happening on the screen or what's happening with your product, but who are the actors? Why are they there? Give me some motivation. What is the context? Are they using this at work, at home, in the car, right? Um, and this is something we can show to people to get, to get feedback and ask, you know, is this something you would use? Is this a tool you would use? Um, so those are a couple of prototypes and and that's um, an overview of the design process. So at the at the end of our, our workshop, we hope you'll have um, moved your idea from something that's just kind of um, in your head to more tangible things outside that you can start um, sharing with others and then refining. Um, so thank you for, for watching this video, and uh, Malt and I are very excited to work with you in the, the boot camp, and we'll see you all very soon.